The GA Hour is sponsored by Paddy Power. For exclusive content from their GA ambassadors and other high-profile contributors, check out news.paddypower.com. So Anthony Cunningham was uh, speaking after the game and his kind of analysis was pretty spot on. He said, sometimes we kicked the ball away too easily in the first half. It was a wet day and probably a day that didn't suit that. And we know their style of play is great and it was very obvious against Mayo that they like to get a good kick pass down to a link man and then work it from there. And the Smith seemed to be that link man a lot in the first half and it just wasn't, the ball wasn't sticking. Do you know what I mean? And there's horses for courses, Maddie. That's your game plan. But in the second half, they didn't force any of those kick passes. They were nice little inside of the boot passes and um, maybe the, the day dried up a little bit and it, they were just sticking. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, that they yeah. The weather did improve and it definitely helped, but um, you know they stuck to their guns. In fairness, and and Conor Cox was a, a, a and has been an, an excellent focal point of the attack. Where you know, contrast with Galway in the second half, where you know Ian Burke, um, uh, Anton O'Lee, they were winning the ball out 60, 70 meters. The ball was being hand passed side, but they actually didn't have a focal point. You know, Michael Daly scored three points in play, and he was one of the first forwards to be taken off. But you know, Galway stuck to their guns and they were able to get those balls into space down the side. And you know, they ran at at, at Galway, and they actually ran through them quite easy in the second half. Where you know, we're just talking off air about Shane Killorn's point near the end. He was going down the middle between the two Galway players regardless, supposed yeah. to throw him and kick the ball over the bar. And, you know, the complete opposite was happening up the far end where Roscommon were turning Galway over far too easy. But, you know, the, or Roscommon played really, really good football as well. And, you know, I said to kick the ball long, they kicked it into space and carried it when they had to. And, you know, it worked really well for them. Yeah, no, it definitely did. And that that's always the situation with these teams. You give Galway a chance to get back and it's hard to get through them. But if you can kind of move it up there a bit faster you've only maybe got Garrett Bradshaw covering the two lads. Do you know what I mean? So I think Ross Common were smart enough to realise it's something we always talk about. Move it down a bit faster yeah. from that half-back line to that half-forward line faster than the retreating yeah. players can run. And get yourself into a better position to play that final ball then as well. Like in, Matty, you'd probably be able to <laughs> complain about it a bit more, but sometimes I think that defenders and midfielders don't appreciate the forward, you know, when they're kicking the ball towards them. Sometimes you just lamp it from downfield and say, well... It's his problem now, like you know, when rather than getting themselves into a bit of a platform and popping it forward, like J- Jim McGuinness in his book is always talking about those 20, 25 yard pop passes, as he calls them. Yeah. So it's not just booting the ball at somebody. And you saw it then, like you know, when Connor Cox and Murta were getting on a lot more ball, then people were coming off them, and Ross Common looked more dangerous. But I think it was because he got them into that area of the field first. Yeah. Play it. No, it is, and it's interesting. All those kick passes go to a player that's on the wing, usually yeah. in around the forty-five. So, like, I mean. The, the link man on the 45 is breaking left and right, right? So that, that's the huge target both sides of him. Just give it down to him. And I think this is great. You go wide to the half forward line and then you give it from the half forward line diagonally in around the D. So you're cutting out the sweeper. And like, I mean, if that's just a basic game plan to say, lads, I want you in the half back line. Get it down wide. There's loads of space either side of them. Just get it down there. And then the man that gets it from there, he's going from, you're going wide on the half forward line in on the full forward line isn't that that's easy and it's a very basic game plan and you can do run throughs on this and you can say right this is what we're trying to do here and run through it and Ross Common seemed to have a good idea of how they want to play the game which I thought was good to watch and it did work because it was particularly in the second half the number of little 30 40 metre kick passes from the sideline in around the D yeah. you know, that was easily picked up as you said it takes the sweeper out as well and it worked nearly every time now look at Connor Cox and Different fellas, uh, Dermot Murta did win balls down the sideline in the full forward line. And Cox is excellent at lateral runs. Like you never see him winning the ball 30, 40 metres from the goal. He's always about 20, 25 mm-hmm. metres out at most, maybe on the sideline. And even his last point is just saying the last point he kicked, you know, from play, he brushed by the, the Galway defender far too easy, you know, in a, in a Connacht final. Um, but, you know, they, were, they, they played the game in the second half on their own terms, that all the possession, the, the numerous turnovers, which allowed them to attack a bit quicker as well. And defenders don't like defending, running towards their own goal. They want to have their back to the goal and they want to have bodies. But even when Galway got a lot of bodies behind the ball, they didn't defend yeah. very well. You know, they were kind of, it was kind no. of passive defending where, you know, terrible. we have lots of numbers, but, you know, we're not really doing anything. And it yeah. was so on Galway like in the second half because, you know, it was like this to send the dressing room at half time. Yeah, there was no intensity of Galway's tackling. Yeah. Like, there was no divilment. And didn't Galway pride themselves? Maybe Maybe it was Paddy Talley bringing it out on being wankers on the field. Let's yeah. be honest, you know, getting in lads' faces. And like obviously, Owen Kern was at that, but the, the laugh was on the other side of his face. <laughs> then Murta really celebrated his goal, but Kern's always at that. But there was no, there was just none of that stuff from Galway, that nastiness that you see about them. And like Tomas Flynn, he's defending for three of the Roscommon um, uh, points was absolutely unbelievable. It was Ronan uh, Daly, the very first, I think it was first Roscommon score where he cut in on his left foot. Left Flynn completely flat-footed, made no effort to get a hand on him. 
Then the next one was Niall Flynn, or Niall Daly, uh, his point. Flynn is just standing back, admiring him, and then slips. And he just gets in for a point. And then Killoran's last point, where he just runs through Tomas Flynn. Like, where's the bloody intensity? This yeah. fella's six foot seven. Like, I mean, I do think that there, that softness to Galway was back there yesterday in the second half, incredibly. Yeah. And I thought that was gone forever. And I was watching this like, sort of blanket that they were using all these numbers back and thinking this is becoming re- more and more redundant every week because it's too easy to keep the ball. Roscommon weren't, like, a, a part of it was because Galway lacked that intensity, but they weren't under pressure. They can come back out, they can kick it backwards. The pitch is massive, so they don't need to go into that blanket and they just waited until something freed up. And yeah. eventually it did. Galway would have been better sort of putting them under more pressure around the pitch and almost teasing Roscommon into trying a more risky ball. You know, and like trying to kick it forward and then maybe a defender could nick in and win it or yeah. you know, it would break somewhere. But instead, Ross Common just were able to play it safe and when Galway brought that lack of intensity, it made it even more easy for them. And it was funny because if went on a Corrin's point, you could almost say that Ross Common were that team in the first half. I don't <laughs> know what was going on. Like, I mean, I wasn't getting hands on. And like, I mean, Ross Common clearly upped it and Galway didn't and it, the Galway performance you'd be really confused about it these are uh, arguably people are talking out. I know they're riddled with injuries and important injuries and Peter Cook wasn't at the races he was only back from injury and he went to midfield O'Corin Fionton O'Corin I'll probably pronounce his name um, arseways but he was playing actually fairly well um, and in the second half Galway imagine going 22 minutes without a score completely dominated on kickouts which we thought that they would dominate even uh, on both kickouts and didn't get any re- Roscommon didn't really get any kickouts in the second half because Galway had no shots on the goal. So it was all the pressure was up on the other end of the field. Because the way I look at it is when because uh, Ros- Roscommon panic goes through the Roscommon team when there's a press under kickouts and like I mean they went long and I think they were right to go long, but because and I think they won fifty fifty on them in the first half something like that they won- went long more than they went short. Just get it down there because like I mean this panic. And then Galway were the same. Lavelle was trying too many uh, fancy ones. And it's like, this psychologically, how that ruins a team and lifts the other team. When you, We have these lads now. We have them pinned in. I don't know. Like, I mean, I do think, I thought Rory Geller made an interesting comment at halftime. He said, um, it looked like uh, Ross Common hadn't done any work on their kickouts. But he says, maybe on the big occasion, goalkeepers aren't brave enough. And I never really thought about that, that even if you did a lot of work on the kickout, it's still a goalkeeper could kind of bottle it you don't really yeah. think of stuff yeah. like that um, well it was absolutely in the second half it was Ross Common that had all the devilment about him anyway you know, yeah. in the Galway lads face they were pushing him they were mouthing at him they were blocking runs you know and the last 10 or 12 minutes was basically no football played because they were cute enough yeah. to stay on the ground after yeah. taking hits and stuff like that but on the kickouts you know when they pushed up on Galway you know one or two bad kickouts really puts the wind up a keeper and puts the wind up a team and Ross Common picked off a couple of them and got a score or two of some of the ones that they did and then they just start lashing it back out in the middle of the field and, and it was Ross Common's hunger that just kept picking up breaking ball after that's breaking it. ball and cleaned out Galway and that's probably where they won the match in the second half but it's just it was such a contrast in the first half where kind of they were all over the place but I think I was just looking at the second half and I think our Galway probably had about maybe eight shots in the whole second half so I was taking away their chance of actually pushing up on the Ross Common kick out and putting mm. them under real pressure so you know you take that away from them there's far more kick outs coming from the other side and it's you know it's easier face a kick out rather than have your then be, sorry you have to win it and turn around and head down the field with it and Ross Common you know dominated the kick out probably from both sides in the second and, half and even it just it just showed how much they were in on top is that Shane Walsh scored a 45 um, in the second half and that was obviously an opportunity to go with to put a good press you had um, Loy went straight to midfield. Tiger Rock up, oh, caught caught a clean. It was just like Jesus. This is this really is Ross Commons there when he's catching a clean, and like I mean that was outstanding. I think that led to to the Connor Cox um, late point. So like I mean, I I don't know. I think that like we keep saying this about kickouts and obviously the thing of going short. And when you lose a short one, there is panic stations and it's terrible. If you go long, why can't you work on going long, but swarming that area for the break? And that extra determination will win you on the break and you're way down the field. I think we've gone away from trying to win breaking ball to being fancy with kickouts. I think, genuinely think, that it's nice to have a little mix, not to, not to I think you should be putting 70% of your kickouts along. Stop messing with it. Seriously, it's yeah. too fashionable now to do it when it causes more panic than it's worth. And I think psychologically it causes panic because goalkeepers are, are, aren't really able to do it. The other team sent, s- smells blood. And suddenly then, you know, like Galway just pinned Roscommon in towards the end of that first half by dominating on their kickouts. They are very important, 
And I just think, get it off down the field. Maybe I'm a bit, being a bit old-fashioned on no. this. Uh, no, I think you're right, but I, I think Ross Common probably read what goal we were doing and they pinned them in for most of the second half. And in fairness, like, Lavelle was very predictable. Like Most keepers, like to when they're going long, they like to kick across themselves. So if you're right-footed, it's going left. So Ross Common were able to, as they're facing, it's the right wing. So they were sort of on it a bit more and it was very obvious what Lavelle was going to do. And... It made it more sort of made me question more why they didn't play Bernard Poyer. I don't know what the that decision was. They seemed to bring Lavelle in, uh, seemingly because of his kicking. But like it was very he easy never convinces me with his yeah, kicking anyway. Doesn't. So Galway have a problem. Yeah. Galway definitely have a problem there. The the thing on the the break and ball, Matty, um, is like the way half back lines now are conservative. They're not even following half forwards too far. So you could have two half forwards extra in an area where you're going to break the ball. So like I mean, you have a weaker midfield. If you're telling me even even I was able to break a ball in midfield and I'm terrible in the air, if you want to spoil someone and put a break where you want it, it'll take like a really good fetcher to to you know be able to fetch. So if you're talking about a, a midfielder like Tiger Rourke or whoever it is, Caloran, who would be much bigger, and you're telling me they can't be up beside their man and spoil him as the ball at the pitch of the ball. So then you have two extra half forwards and commit your if you're sending it to one side commit another body or other midfielder to come across and have a plan of where this break is going right we're breaking it straight down in front so you're two extra half forwards your job is to get on those breaks is this very basic that I'm saying or like wh- why is the game gone away from something that's so that's that, I don't know I think we kind of go through phases it's like the blanket defence you went through that for a while and gradually you're starting to get away from it again thank God and I think this thing with kickouts is probably going to be the same where I'm not a fan of short kickouts because more often than not it goes to probably one of the full back line where literally your 13 year support players are all ahead of you you have no one from behind if, if that breaks down it's probably going to end up in the goal I think we've seen it in the Wexford hurling match the other night with a short puck out I could have cost them the game I could have cost them place in the championship but you're seeing a week in week out with short kickouts I've always said I like to see the ball going to the middle of the field worst case scenario you lose the ball but you're 70 metres from your own goal rather than losing it 25 metres from your own goal and I think it was the Donegal from Mana game where we've seen a lot of that where both from Mana and Donegal really kicked the ball long flooded where the ball was going to land particularly from Mana because you know they, they got a lot of guys behind the ball flo- and tried to win breaks and you know th- so they weren't really losing short kickouts but I think it's something that's probably gradually going to maybe start to filter away a bit as well and to be honest I hope it does there's, there's still absolutely a place for kicking the ball long as you say teams just don't seem to be working on breaking ball it is very simple to get a couple of extra bodies there and by the law of averages you're probably going to win more breaks than the other team that's the thing but the way the game has gone other than Mayo the halfback line isn't going to all follow you into midfield anyways like because they're too panicked about leaving that huge maybe or gap and that's Exposing where Mayo your, your, yeah. your full back line yeah. that's the thing so like I mean it was O'Malley sent out one kick out in the first half that led directly to a Shane Walsh point he tried to put it out to the wing on the 45 it wasn't on at all he, it was a contested one but they're even more silly as far as I'm concerned. At least the one to the cornerback is almost guaranteed to get it. Yeah. It's these more higher risk ones. that, Anyways, then he went long with the very next one. And I think it was Deveni won the break and he was away down the field. And I was just thinking, I was like, why is this not? Now, he did go, I think the stats are, did 11 first half kickouts. He went long with eight and short with three. They're at 55%. I couldn't find any stats for the second half, but I'm sure it was a hell of a lot um, better than that. But, like, I mean, I hate breaking I hate breaking analysis down to intensity and work rate, <laughs> but it seemed to be that, and efficiency. Connor Cox was saying after the game, I think we're more efficient. It's pretty much the same as Anthony Cunningham. In the first half, we lost a good few balls that we should have held on to. God, we play a good defensive arc when they're set up, and I suppose... Uh, we were a bit more patient in the second half, and that paid off. That's pretty much the the tale of the the tale of the game. It's the more efficient Ross Common, Ross Common dominating the breaking ball, higher work rate, and Galloway just stayed in the dressing room. Well, to say stats doesn't tell the whole story, but it kind of does <laughs> in this case. Um, you know, Galway were, or Ross Common were really economical, particularly in the second half with their shooting as well. You know, they only had probably less than a handful of wides. Um, so you know, they made really good use of what they had but just on the, on their goal I think Galway will be really disappointed with the goal that they conceded you know yeah. Kyle Craig has ran straight down the middle kind of nearly unchallenged and, and um, Sean Andy O'Kelly is looking at him rather than looking at Murta slipping yeah. in behind him and, and even the finish you know the keeper's beaten at the near post where he's kind of looking away from the ball if it goes across him and goes in fair enough but it, you know it's not you know he'll be disappointed with probably he with, kind with of half turned his goal. arse to it he, didn't he, he he did a little bit yeah but it was it was kind of I think Sean Andy O'Kelly losing um, Dermot Murta running in behind him where he was kind of just ball watching you know that ball if, if he stays with him that ball is not on and it breaks down and it comes out and you know ultimately you know you find there's sometimes 
it's hard to find a, a turning point in the game but without doubt that was the big turning point in that game and the, it was kind of it was all one way traffic after that it was definitely and like I mean it was poor defending and we're talking to Cottle Craig about the goal there and he was explaining that to us as well like I mean he's coming forward there like I mean he's just waiting for Andy to make a mistake there really and give him something now Murta made a lovely angle run just at the at the time when Sean Andy stepped forward Murta was gone and like it's, it's, it's almost like there's nothing on here there's nothing on here there's a point on only a point and then yeah. Sean w- Murta and Craig are waiting for Sean Andy to, f- to mess up and he gave them what they wanted yeah. he took yeah. that step forward it was a very poor poor defending by him it was, was I'm sorry and it would have been a good point because Bradshaw was right beside him you know, like, you know, and it probably could have got the point away, but Bradshaw was at him. I don't know where Sean Andy was stepping forward. To, to be yeah, honest. he didn't need to. You know, no, he, was, he didn't need to. that area of the field, coming close to the small square, if you hand pass the ball three, four, five yards forward like that, you're probably going to take a massive hit and get the ball turned over where there's a lot of bodies. But it, just the simple thing of Sean Andy Kelly step, st- stopping and then stepping forward created that yard of space in behind mm-hmm. that Mart had time to get on it, get his head up and get the shot away. And, and said, you know, the keeper get conceding at the near post. You know, it's not, it's not probably ideal either. Look at, but you know, said that was the it was game set and match. Yeah, there. and then he went running over, shouting at uh, Owen Cairns <laughs> as well. So they were having their battle. Another um, mistake I thought from Galway was the whole Shane Walsh started corner forward. Shane Walsh changed the game for the second half of the first half, coming out the field, getting on ball, driving at them, and then laying it off. And he was throwing it around very well. Then, funnily enough, in the second half, he's put back into the corner and he's in there for 20 minutes before he's brought back out again. And, and like, that not, was a weird one now. And the ball not kicked at him, which, no. was, which was stranger because they, they, some of their points... Now, they couldn't play, get their hands on much no, ball. No, they didn't have a lot of ball, but they, they, some of their scores from play in the first half were top class yeah. and from distance as well. But, like, as I said, I think about eight shots in the whole second half. They never actually had, even when he was in there, they said we didn't, they didn't have the ball to kick to him. But they had no focal... Like, the number of times where the likes of Oli or... Um, you know, Ian Burke, who's a super footballer, Brannigan when he came on, were taking the ball coming off guys' shoulders 50, 60 metres from their own goal rather than from the Ross Common goal. Yeah. So they actually had nothing up front. They got to about 45, the ball went sideways and backwards, an odd hand pass forward, and invariably Ross Common turned it over and came out with it. And, you know, Kyle Craig made one great turnover in the second half um, from a hand pass where he came out and he got a good wallop for himself. Oh, but, yeah. but you knew then, Ross, he wanted a far more because Ian Burke went in and had kind of had a poke at the ball with his foot, but he bent down and picked it off the ground, picked it up and came storming out and got a wallop and got a free out but you knew then that Common really wanted it more than Galway yeah. did well that's it and the thing about Shane Walsh is right so like I mean you have a plan I want to play Shane Walsh in the corner and that's fine then you see it's not working in the first half you bring him out he's playing really well mm. would you not say right well it, maybe this is a bit of pig headedness from the manager saying well I'm putting him back into where the original yeah. plan was rather than say geez, well he's cleaning up out there and going to leave him out there yeah. that was weird as well <laughs> I wonder was there a chat in the change rooms at halftime? Like Shane, you're coming out too far. He's like, I'm dominating the match. <laughs> like, you know? ah, surely he was giving the know. direction. Well, uh, to, to have like to have so few guys up front, he was always going to be double and treble teamed if he was left up there in the full forward line. So you know, more freedom out the field a bit. Yeah. He's such a good player. He's able to pick out a pass. He's able to see passes and stuff like that a little bit further out the field as that kind of link man kind of slash playmaker. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. You know, but as I said, they didn't have the ball to do anything with it anyway. So I find yeah. it interesting, like from the Thursday show in Roscommon and Sean Armstrong talking about. About, you know Walsh going mad if those boys drift back and, and they don't keep four up but and whilst they oh, might Ian, want Ian Burke won't go mad yeah oh sorry Ian Burke going mad and whilst they might keep those people up is there a plan then you know to, to sort of get the best out of them or is it just like there's four of you up when you get the ball back away you go like you're yeah. talking about something as simple as that pattern of Ross Common getting it to the wing and playing it inside to the three boys there didn't seem to be any plan for Galway yeah well no there definitely didn't there definitely didn't Galway are a little bit in no man's land in that you wonder are they trying to evolve from the really defensive retreating back into zones I don't know on the evidence of yesterday they were near to here and there now obviously no defensive game plan will work if you can't get hands on and tackles on and that's what the whole thing is about there was no good turnovers there was no good breakaway scores most of their scores were coming from the more patient build up Shane Walsh punching a hole throwing it off now there's a value in that as well but there was no real, there was no verve from them in the second half. There was no, like I said, nastiness. Now, I, I do know that they're big leaders at Comer, Paul Conroy. You know, these fellas are out. Kine in the full back line might have been a bit of a loss to them. Duggan in midfield is definitely a loss because I think Tomas Flynn needs 
a big leader kind of beside him because I think he he probably isn't that player. Cook was only back from injury. They weren't playing with a full deck, but uh, um, it was Johnny Heaney was very poor again ye- or yesterday. Which what was his role yesterday in comparison to other years? You didn't see any. I remember when they were at their best. It was Johnny Heaney, Brannigan, Shane Walsh breaking a pace. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it was Comer and Burke left inside. Now I know you're losing some players outside of that, but there's no evidence yesterday. What, I'm not sure what Galway are even at now. You know that kind of way. No, there wasn't. Like I said, the second half was so flat from Galway, which was very, very strange considering the position they're in. Like they nearly looked, you know, like they couldn't be beaten at half time because they were playing so well. And you know, five points in in a match like that looked like a huge lead with conditions the way they were, and probably going to deteriorate a bit as well. Um, but like they just they, they got so far up the field and just stopped. There was no hard runners coming off the shoulder. There was no no, no target inside. You know no. the whole thing just fell down. And, you know, Kevin Walsh said himself after the match. No, I can't kind of really explain what happened in the second half that they were so flat. And that's exactly what it was. They Maybe were very, it is. Very flat. Yeah. It's hard to explain it. And Ian Burke wasn't at the races yesterday. We might talk about um, that a little bit more in part three. But like I mean, there's so much is depending on Ian Burke throwing it around and making things happen that when he's been really tightly marked. He just, Galway seemed to have no kind of creativity up there maybe in the second half. But you mentioned uh, a while ago, Matty, about how Roscommon closed the game out. Now, it's not ideal to watch, but like, I mean, Jesus, if you're on a team, that's exactly what you want. The seven minutes of extra time were a waste of time for Galway because yeah. Roscommon started spocking okay. at them. They started trying to get roused. The Dailies were in their element at this stage, yeah. the three brothers. Like, I mean, this was this is what it was all about. And those seven minutes... Galloway were at nothing really nothing happened absolutely nothing <laughs> happened barring a couple of Ross Common points on the break but like even Rory Vell a ball dropped short and a, a Galloway attacker came in um, and, and literally flicked him and he was down the ground for maybe a minute but look at if you're on the team you're saying absolutely fair yeah. play that's exactly game management I'd say, I'd say Cunningham was delighted on the sideline because definitely five of that minutes was spent with guys with physios and doctors in with guys on the ground yeah. who look at were absolutely out on their feet but it was exactly the way to kill the clock because it, Galway realistically never looked like they want to score a goal Baron I think it was actually a flick to one of the Roscommon defenders got on the ball and John almost went between O'Malley's legs yeah that was John but, Daly that yeah. was actually a good chance like, I but mean, they, never, they never created you know, they never no. looked like really looked like creating a goal chance they had a, you know, a swing at a shot at the end that, that went out wide but there was nothing creative coming from them and that was the only way they were probably going to get back into it was a bit of luck like that and you know, they didn't get it there was uh, uh, Niall Daly was in a f- involved in a couple of flare-ups. The one was with Cook defending his little brother and then there was another little um, squirmish. Is that what we call it? Coming together under the stand. And it was uh, Sean Kelly fell for it hook, line and sinker. Like Roscommon were trying to goad them into it and then they fouled them and then suddenly Roscommon got involved with a few lads pushing and shoving and then Kelly realised he started trying to calm it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Realised this is what they want us to do yeah. but it was too late then. Yeah. <laughs> Daly's one uh, with Cook, yeah, it was good. It went on for a long time and even just the way he was protesting with the referee for ages afterwards but then he won the next ball, real dirty ball and he won a free off the back of it and he just lifted it. You could see all the Roscommon people yeah. on the stand loving it. And we know the Roscommon fans are bloody lunatics anyways. Like, I mean, you know, like... Uh, what game was it after I said the Roscommon fans were crazy? Oh, it was the Armagh game in Port Leash that I was at. Oh, yes, right. I yeah. thought that there were absolute lunatics in the stand uh, that day <laughs> watching that match. But yeah, listen, fantastic stuff from Roscommon. 